You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Well, good day, everyone. We sure appreciate you tuning in today and listening in. I'm Alan Gingrich, the Director of Hunting Operations at United Kennel Club, and I'm joined by our, by our Coon Home Programs Manager, uh, Mr. Wade, uh, Trevor Wade. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. glad to be here. Yeah. Well, we're going to change gears a little bit today and talk about uh, little hounds. We're going to talk about some beagles. Yeah, little beagles. I'm excited to talk about it. I got some good stuff here compiled. And- yeah, you know, all, all year long, you're, you're wrapped up and do a whole lot with all the coon hounds, you know, go to a lot of events. But you've had the chance to go to a couple of our beagle events here in the last this last year. And I think you had a pretty good time. Went with me to North Carolina here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I went to a couple of beagle events this year. And I know uh, for next year, we're kind of making some plans ahead of time here to make to make some plans to maybe get out to the Hunting Beagle World Championship. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah, well, speaking of, that's the first thing I want to kind of cover. I have a little bit of news and a little bit of an announcement here, and that is the uh, location of the World Championship this next year. Um, we got had, we had a great time at uh, Waynesburg, PA, there at the Greene County Fairgrounds, and, and just had a great world hunt here uh, the first part of October here. So, um, And the club would like to have it back. The hunters really would like to see us take it back, and uh, – We've had some time to uh, uh, think about things, and, and we've got the agreement signed, and we are, in fact, going back to Waynesburg, Pennsylvania next year. So it'll be at the same place, same station, Green County Fairgrounds. Uh, it'll be Friday through Sunday, October 6th, 7th, and 8th. So Perfect. Breaking 2023. news. There you go. So you'll see some of those ads come out here in the near future. So, yeah, get your dogs qualified, and uh, I don't see it uh, – like last this last year, they had they just did such a wonderful job. Plus points in in fifty seven or fifty six of fifty seven total casts throughout the weekend. Great job! So we're looking forward to going back. Yeah, you know, there's there's always talk about where we're going the next year, the following year. I know we'd like to go back out to Missouri again. Uh, <clears throat> there's a club in Indiana that uh, uh, you know it's been a while since we've been back there. You know, but they're struggling a little bit as far as being able to pull this off, but. Uh, so um, it sounds it just works out good, I think, to go back to Pennsylvania and hopefully around the corner might be going out west again too. Hey, you know it's uh, getting harder and harder to find clubs that are a- willing and able to put on a major event of this magnitude and to have a club that's doing it and all yeah. the hunters uh, enjoyed it. That's yeah. that's two birds with one stone. Sounds yeah. like. Well, so uh, one of our recent podcasts that you and I did, we did uh, a topic on uh, reproducers lists uh, and on coonhounds specifically. And today, uh, we're going to do the same thing with uh, beagles. Talk about beagles' uh, reproduction records and some of our all-time uh, beagles, be it current and historical as well. So uh, if you're ready, let's dig into this a little bit. And let's start with uh, our males, our all-time list of most offspring produced males. And we, uh, we ran this query the other day, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting list. So we've actually got... Twenty. We're going to highlight the uh, like the top ten. Yeah. Uh, so we read off the top ten. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a yeah. list there. There you now go. I'll read yeah. them off to you here. And, and uh, this is going to be the dogs that have produced the most registered offspring. Is yeah. What that amounts to. Uh, the number one on this list is White River Tough Enough. Uh, second is Mil- Milam's Loco Go Red. Third is Thames Valley Butch. Fourth is Halfway Molly's Mister T. Then you have Shenango Trigger. Glade Mount, uh, Glade Top Mountain, go get them, Scooby Doo, Lone Pine Buddy, Top Notch Sky King, Ryan's Buckshot, and rounding out the top ten there is LS's Run and Gun Jack. Yeah, so you see there in tenth place, two hundred and twenty-five pups for tenth place all time, but that leading dog there has four hundred and fifty-two pups sired. That's uh, that's the most as far as UKC be- registered beagles goes, 452. And when you look at it compared to some of the other dogs, you know, 374 there in second, that's actually quite a big gap in yeah. the number of pups there. Yeah, yeah you know, so you mentioned uh, White River Tough Enough. That's uh, if, if you know anything about UKC beagles, that 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 name is uh, synonymous with, with beagles, you know, in the program. Uh, old uh, White River, they called him the late Dale Prunting. Was a big, big supporter, but he probably the he, the biggest supporter of United Kennel Club and this program. Uh, but the White River Tough Enough has been at the top of this list 
a lot of our lists for a long time. And he is here. He is the, has sired the most pups here. Uh, but he is, he was a uh, 2001 model. Uh, tough was, and he is sired by world show champion, hunting beagle champion, grand champion, smooth moving Elvis. Uh, now there you see Elvis wasn't, uh, he, he had a hunting beagle title, I guess, but not, he wasn't a grand or anything, but obviously a, a good looking hound. And so was tough and produced a lot of nice hounds. And then he was off of a female called white river. Miss Ricky was his dam there, but yeah, that dog is, uh, um, number one for, uh, you know, he's, He's at the top of a lot of our lists. White River, tough enough. Hey, I'm I'm just uh, here with the top dogs here. Um, you, I know you pulled some information on a couple of the different ones there. Uh, I know the Beagle program really didn't get started as far as hunting Beagle and competing with Beagles didn't get started till the early 90s, right? That's right. That's um, right. So there's probably, most of them are probably more... Uh, late nineties, early two thousands that you're going to see at this time is that a, a lot of them so? are. Yeah. yeah, we're going to we're going to see a couple of dogs. We're going to get to one here in a minute that goes back to uh, uh, some of the early foundation stock. You know, that is, that is on this list. You know, so uh, but yeah, it is. So uh, second uh, with three, a total of three hundred and seventy four total pups produced. You know, before I go on, it's a good, uh, it's probably good to bring up is what does it, uh, how does a dog get. How do they make sure they get on the, or the sire gets credit for his pups? Because there's a lot of dogs that still get single registered. So when you single register a dog, um, it, so long as that dog has its sire and dam listed that are UKC registered, the sire and dam, they will get credit for it. But we have some dogs that do get single registered where they do not list the sire and dams. And even if they were UKC registered, that their, their sires and dams won't get credit for those pups. So that's why, that's one good reason it's, it's important that they do note them. And even more important is what I would always suggest to breeders is, is to, they can keep that from happening or to make sure they all get credit. And that is by litter registering them. Right. So if they litter register them, they will always be, uh, they can, uh, assure themselves that all their pups will get credit. So, um, so yeah, second with 374 pups was that, uh, Milam's Loco Go Red, uh, that dog has a 1999 birthday, so he comes from, you know, that's a dog has been, you know, 22 years ago, 23 years ago. Uh, but uh, Bub or Gary, uh, Gary Milam out of West Virginia and Gerald Zirkel owned that dog. And I remember back in the day, that was uh, that was one of the big stud dogs there, threw a lot of nice, nice pups there. So he was at number two. Number three is one of those uh, foundation stock dogs that we talked about, uh, had 337 pups. And that's uh, F.S. Thames Valley Butch. Now, that F.S. is that's what that stands for is foundation stock. And if you and I have access to these dogs' records, and if you go into their system, you'll see in the upper right-hand corner there, it literally shows foundation stock. So that's how they registered those first beagles back in those days. Now, this dog, this Thames Valley Butch, it was owned by a, uh, do or, uh, a fellow by the name of Stephen Krozicki out of Ontario, Canada registered a lot of beagles back in those days, but this dog's uh, sired 337 total pups. Uh, number four uh, was uh, Halfway Molly's Mr. T. Uh, that dog is, uh, and going back to that Thames Valley Butch, uh, single register dogs, uh, shows no sire and dam on that and foundation stock, so I, I can't tell you who the sire and dam was. Right. But moving on to number four, 327 pups there uh, on Halfway Molly's Mr. T. Uh, this dog was sired by uh, Batchelder's Black Ice Chip, the older feller from up here, Gerald uh, Batchelder out of Michigan up here, owns that Ice Chip dog. And then the dam was halfway Mark V's Molly. Uh, I know a little bit, and this dog's been passed around a little bit, but he's sitting four, and I never, it's just one of those things that's interesting. You know, I remember this dog when he was young, young, uh, because my youngest brother owned him when he was a puppy. He was the first uh, that had him, and it seemed like every time he changed hands, he changed hands five times, and uh, every time he changed his name. Yep, the Mr. <laughs> T, but it was always something different. Right. Uh, my brother called him Buck Lake Mr. T, and then he uh, got passed on to Mr. Jed Nichols, uh, who used to work here at United Kennel Club at one time. He he renamed him Jed's Buck Lake Ice T, and then from there he went to Joe Brown, who uh, changed his name to Halfway Molly's Mr. T, and he also titled him. So after that, nobody else could change yeah, his that name ends, anymore. That, that, that ended that, the name that changing. Trend, huh? Yeah, and then from there he went out to Missouri to Donnie and Angela Baker, who then uh, eventually sold him to Stan and Daniel Collins out there in in Missouri. But uh, 
Yeah, so that's a little story there on Miss, uh, Halfway Molly's Mr. T. And then rounding out those top five is another dog that is very recognizable in uh, in the Hunting Beagle format, Shenango Trigger. Uh, he's number five all time with 312 total pups sired. And he was uh, sired by AMCA Snoopy and off of a world champion Shenango Star. And that was the late Bill McFarlane owned that dog and, and uh, eventually... Uh, Moved on, uh, Stephen Chumney ended up uh, with the dog after Bill passed, uh, but that dog needs no introduction in our program. Stand, he's at the top of a lot of these lists. We'll hear hear more about him, but he was a he was born in two thousand eight. So, so yeah, that's our top five. Yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of interesting to me. And we talked about it a little bit on the Coonhound episode talking about re- top reproducers. How um, we were not sure if some of the the modern stud dogs of today are ever going to reach the heights that uh you're, we see in the in the history when you look at this list are is the beagles kind of the same way and whereas they're using this there's more just more stud dogs out there that are advertised and used and then back maybe in tough enough or uh you know trigger mr t's days you bring up a good point and i think that's probably going to be the case we talked about this with the, some of the coonhound stuff right. you know back in the day you had your certain stud dogs that were uh, getting a lot of females, a lot more than the ones today. And I think they just have a lot more choices out there today. And I think that's very much the case here. You know, back in the day, you know, Tough and Trigger, they were some of the, and, and Loco Go Red and and uh, the Stacys had a couple of big name stud dogs, you know, that a lot of uh, guys were taking their females to. But as time has went on, um, there's just a lot more good reproducing sires that came around. So, I, I think you're right. You know, I don't think the dogs of the sires of today, unless uh, we could we could be wrong about that, but the potential to reach the number of puppies produced like some of those dogs did is probably, that's going to be a bit big number to reach. Yeah, the advent sure. of social media has made it so I can sit at the house and see 10 people's runs from that morning and yeah. uh, and hear their dogs and see how they're running and yeah. kind of get a feel for it. Yeah. And it's just a lot different than just seeing advertisements in magazines and yeah. what have you. Yeah, so once a year we we compile a list of top reproducing sires, and that's the dogs that are current. Uh, can, there's a list for current, and then also followed by historical list, two separate lists for males, and then the same thing with dams. So uh, we're gonna get into some of that, try to cover some of the top ten, and like I said, once a year we run this. So the list that we're going by was was the most recent that was. Uh, uh, ran this compiled this last february of 2022 and that goes in one of the beagle newsletters it, it does and you can find this whole list in the uh, april uh, beagle uh, newsletter and that ran in april you can go to our website and go uh, they're all listed up there and go back and find some of this but uh, I, yeah so i know. guess we're going to start out with some of the current beagle sires that uh, what yeah, a, yeah. i know that there's probably some different parameters in place to to compile this list and to rank them, can you can you tell us a little bit about what it takes to make this list here, the current list? Yeah, it's quite simple, but it's uh, uh, for one, you know, for in order for the progeny to be considered on this list, or the sire and dam get credit for it, or the sires, we'll just talk about them for now. Uh, so that is uh, any any progeny that was single registered and whose sire and dam's registration numbers were not provided would not be included here. Okay. You know, and that's why I said they needed to, when you single register a dog, that's why that's important. But uh, uh, breeders can uh, make sure that doesn't happen by, uh, by litter registering their dogs. So the, the current list is one, it only counts progeny or offspring that was whelped uh, on or after January 1st of 2012. So that only includes dogs that are well, right now no more than about 10 years old right now. Right. Yeah. yeah, I noticed right off the bat when you gave this to me, our number, I don't, I guess I'm foreshadowing a little bit. Yeah. Trigger is the first dog on here. He's yeah. listed as 194 pups listed right. on the current list, but we just talked about him having over 300 pups on the ground. That's right. You know, and, but uh, 194 of those are the ones that meet the, uh, the criteria for this right. current list that were born after January. You know, so there were some that were obviously born before that, that make up the rest of that 312. So. Yeah, let's go down the list here and let's uh, let's start with the top uh, the top five maybe. Yeah, we'll start out with the top five. Uh, the number one current reproducer is Shenango Trigger. Uh, to, uh, number two, Clifty Creeks Big John. Three is Cedar Creeks Rocky. Number four is Mountain uh, Stacy's Mountain Outlaw Wildman. 
And also tied for fourth, rounding out the top five, is Cottonmouth's Ragin Cajun Ruger. Yep, and those are some big names out there. You know, anybody that runs Hunting Beagle is very familiar with every one of those. You know, starting out with that Shenango Trigger, already talked about him a little bit. Uh, on this list, you also it also shows us what where they placed last year at this time. And you see he's held that number uh, one spot up there for quite a few years. You know, obviously that tough enough dog that we talked about, uh, he held this spot for you know, as long as he was eligible for it, he's now he's tough as older, you know, obviously. Right. So, uh, but after that, uh, Trigger has held this spot for quite a while, you know. Mentioned his sire name, Snoopy, in the world champion Shenango Star, but uh, 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 he, like I said, we he, he gets credit here for current of 194 pups. And uh, this list is made up, is, sim- is as simple as the dog that has the most titled pups. Now, right. these titles are hunt titles only. And they can be any one of our formats. Hunting Beagle could be for performance pack, or it could be the Beagle Gun Dog as well. Uh, hunt titles, they all get credit for that. So uh, 62 for number one uh, for Shenango Trigger, he has, he has the most. And then number two there, just just to see the sheer difference there, number one between that and number two and how, how you know, how, uh, how up there he is, 26 is number two. Right. 26 title What a dogs. gap. Yeah, yeah, big pretty big gap there. So, uh, and that number two dog is Clifty Creek's Big John. Um, sire, that dog is Top Notch Sky King and out of Brook Hollow Ringer. Uh, that's a, a 2017 model dog. And the dog's not really not that old if you think about it. Uh, but he's owned by Mike Roy out of uh, Missouri. And, uh, and again, a, a dog that won a lot in some of our All-Star series and, and some of those programs uh, back in the day. And... Uh, uh, this this dog has was a he was a whale of a hunting dog himself and has been throwing that in his offspring and and deservably up here in the number two slot with uh, twenty six total tied or uh, titled pups out yep. of one hundred and five that met yeah the that's criteria. that's right at twenty five percent pretty good percentage there yep. for Big John yep yep so uh, moving on to number three Cedar Creek's Rocky um, I actually have a pup my fiddle that we talk about sometimes she's oh, off of Rocky okay <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this dog has, uh, uh, he was the same, just kind of like John uh, and Trigger, uh, not just not just good in the stud pen. You know, they made their mark in the in the field trials as well. Cedar Creek's Rocky is certainly one of those. Um, he is off a of world champion Branco's Chubby Checkers, uh, Roy Swafford's uh, old world champion there, and then off of Halfway Mark 5's Molly. And he was a 2010 uh, model. Uh, and the dog is owned by Joe Brown. He produced, uh, he, he gets credit here current for a total of 178 pups. And of those 18 are titled. So I'm not helping his reproduction record with, <laughs> but with a uh, fiddle here, but <laughs> another satisfied customer. Yeah, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Rocky was a, a, a good solid hound there and he's uh, throwing a lot of that in his pups. So he sits at number three, number four is, um, uh, Talked about the Stacys, and here's one of those sitting in number four, uh, in the number four slot. Stacy's Mountain Outlaw Wild Man. Um, he moved up a spot. He was sitting fifth last year at this time. He's moved up to fourth. He's sired by Hotchkiss Black Diamond Triple Jacks and off of Big D's Hurricane Whitey Almighty, uh, a 2012 model uh, that is owned by Jeff and Coy Stacy out of North Carolina. Uh, Guys, the Stacys have been around the program since day one, basically. But uh, 72 total uh, pups recognized here in the current list, of which 17 are titled. And I would say there, you know, uh, there's a, a bunch of wild man pups out there. You'll probably see him moving up. So 17 total. Uh, moving on to uh, round out the top five, they're also tied for fourth with 17 total title dogs, is Cottonmouth Rage and Cajun Ruger. Uh, that dog is is a 2011 model owned by Shane Seaman of Virginia, and the interesting thing about him, uh, those that know this dog, is he is a three legged dog, mm-hmm. and a stout one too. <laughs> You've seen we've seen three legged hounds before, and and he's like a lot of those. It seems like with one less leg, they uh, they uh, they're no slouches, and you know he he's he's one of those, and he's a pretty impressive hound. So uh, we'll be right back. Alan, we both had Daltra Pathfinder 2s now for a little while. What do you think about yours? I'm liking mine. One of the things I had the opportunity to now download a map of an area where I did not have service, and I've used it there, and it has worked flawlessly. I love it. 
Yeah, I love the crystal clear maps. I love that I never lose reception on my dog's collars anymore. Highly recommended by me as well. Dog Trip Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar of UKC. So that was our top five there. So uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, at least give a little uh, shout out to the rest of the top 10 there. If you don't care, Trevor, you have the list there in front of you. I do. I have it Perfect. here. Uh, six is Branco's Hurricane Whippas. Uh, Mead's Outback Driller is next and seventh. Hurry Up Bone Collector is eighth. Heat em Up Black Phantom is ninth. And we got a couple dogs here tied for 10th. Triple T, Crooks, Ramblin' Rock, and X-Dog Preacher Man. Yeah, they're in the 10th place. You see uh, they each have eight title dogs that uh, makes up the top 10, you know. So it's very attainable, you know. So uh, it certainly leaves a lot of room there for uh, uh, other sires to get in that top 10 for sure. Uh, but, yeah, uh, and, and, again, all of those in the top 10 and even beyond, they're very recognizable names and some very and, – and the one thing about the Beagle program that you see is most of these dogs uh, made their mark in the field before they be, went to the breeding shed. And this is no exception here. So, uh, but yeah, how about we, uh, let's move on to the uh, uh, historical list for uh, males. Yeah, uh, real quick, do you want to tell us how the historic, the parameters, how they differ on the historical list compared to the current list? Same thing. The only difference is, is there is no date start time. It's just from the very first ones that were ever registered is what it amounts to. And, uh, and through February of this year. So, and that is actually the data that we had uh, processed and computerized uh, in our database. So that's going to be, you know, since the late 80s. Yeah, you're going to see some some familiar uh, names here in the top five yep. when I list them off yep. here. Uh, the number one historical reproducer is White River Tough Enough. Yep. Uh, Second is going to be Shenango Trigger. Third is Milam's Loco Go Red. Fourth, and tied for fourth is Branco's Hurricane Whippas and Sundown Mark V's King. Yeah, so here we go again. You know, here's uh, tough enough again. I told you he's going to pop up just everywhere, and obviously on our on our uh, all time list that we started out with here, and now again here on the historical list. But uh, yeah, he had a grand total of 452 pups again, of which a total of 126 are uh, are titled. That was he had pups in uh, uh, hunting uh, uh, 78 hunting beagle champions, 33 grand hunting beagle champions. 10 performance champions and five grand performance pack champions were titled makes up that 126. And, you know, I mentioned he was off of a world show champion. He has also sired a lot of, if you go in our records, you'll see he has a lot of uh, show champion offspring to his uh, credit as well. That doesn't show up here. These are just hunt titles. So yeah, probably and then, one that pops up in a lot of pedigrees still today, I'd say. Absolutely does. With that many pups yep. on the ground. You know, so 126 there. And then uh, you notice our number two dog there, uh, historical, is has 121. So that's that's only five off, you know. So, uh, you know, and after that, it drops down significantly. But there's Shenango Trigger. He he definitely has a shot, you know, to, uh, to pass and take over that uh, all-time number one spot as far as historical, you know, uh, titled offspring, you know. Um, and he's only, he's only uh, five out right now, you know, so it's, it's funny you say that to me, uh, uh being on from the coonhound side of things and seeing how, uh, semen collection and, uh, artificially inseminating dogs has carried on the legacy of dogs from the eighties and nineties that yeah. we're still seeing litters out of these dogs today. Yeah. Is that as prevalent in the beagles as it is? Not as much, but you see here, he has that behind, you know, he's DNA profiled and everything, you know, but not, not as much, but some of them, there's more and more that are, and you'll see several on this, on these lists that right. are, uh, but not quite like you'd see in the coonhounds maybe, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, Prunny and McFarland here, they were serious, what we'd call serious breeders, right. you know, and, and they did all those things. Actually, uh, uh, both of them came from the Coonhound side, you know, Dale Prunny and McFarland both, you know, so uh, McFarland lived there in Pennsylvania, but uh, yeah, Shenango, so here's uh, Shenango Trigger at number two, who himself was a grand hunting beagle champion, a grand champion, you know, on the bench, and was also a performance pack champion, um, but uh so, yeah, he's currently uh, shown on record as uh, Stephen Chumney owning the dog. Now, here's his, uh, here's his total number of pups, you know, on this list, 312. And uh, 70 hunting beagle champions, 37 grands, grand hunting beagle champions. Uh, same thing, performance pack champions, 14 of them. 
you know, and that, that program was a little bit more of a, probably of a conservative dog, you know, so he could uh, bred to the right gyps why uh, uh, he has uh, uh, dogs out there in, in, in a lot of formats. And we're just talking formats in UKC, you know, it's hard telling, you know, there's other dogs out of him as well. 121 total, you know, so this dog passed about, uh, I think it was last year, might have been the year before last when he passed. And, and I, as I understand it, there's, he was collected, but as I understand it, there's only about seven, seven straws remaining. So, uh, I'd say they're being very selective, what they're going to use those, what females are putting that on. Absolutely. And, and honestly, with that many pups on the ground, even if some dogs had multiple, a hunting beagle title and a performance pack title, almost 40% uh, of the pups he had, yeah. had titles. That's yeah. incredible for yeah. him so far. Yeah, so moving on to number three, uh, it's uh, Milums. You kept saying Milums. Okay. It's, it's <laughs> Milums <laughs> is how they pronounce it. Milums Loco Go Red, you know, he was one of those big uh, stud dogs. And if you might imagine, he was he was actually a red arm. Um, so a 99 model. So he he's, uh, he's goes way back there as well. Uh, Gary Milum, Gerald Zirkel on that dog. 374 total pups that he registered or that are registered out of him. Um 37 hunting beagle champions he seems like that's a uh, i guess that was uh that was grands for uh, uh shenango trigger that was grands for him so never mind but he had 37 uh champions 22 grand hunting beagle champions here again performance pack champions six of them and three grand performance pack champions total of 68 title dogs you know so he's he's just right there about half of what second has so we talked about that a little bit ago. Yeah, it's going to be hard for some of these, the rest of them, to catch some of these top dogs here. So uh, number four, uh, tied for fourth, was uh, Branco's Hurricane Whipass, uh, who was uh, off of Branco's Mystery Man and Branco's Manitoba Lucy. Now, Mystery Man is another dog that did very well in UKC, a great reproducer. Uh, did a lot of winning, same thing, just a lot of these dogs, you know, they made their mark in the field. Mis uh, Mystery Man is owned by Danny Dugan. He was, he was definitely one of them. They called him Manny, uh, but uh, just a solid, solid hound, produced a lot of good dogs. And as you see, his uh, offspring carried that off as well, or carried that on as well. Uh, currently owned by Mike Green out of North Carolina. He and his wife, Gina, uh, produced a total of 160 pups, uh, 49 of which are titled. And then the uh, same thing tied for fifth, also with 49 total uh, uh, pups, is the world champion, uh, Sundown Mark V's king. Uh, he, he won the world championship, I'm going to say, probably in 2000, uh, early 2000s when he won the UKC world, uh, who is off of Mark V's ace in the hole and is off of Branco's RT, RTK JD Babe. He was a 1997 model. And owned by the late Lee Alexander from over there around Kilbuck, Ohio, is where he was at. 170 total pups and, again, 49 offspring. And there's a dog that uh, uh, produced a lot, a lot of nice dogs there. You know, just 49 title, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of good pups. Right. Uh, and going through 6th through 10th here, just one thing looking at them. Yeah, there are going to be a couple names that we've mentioned already, but also I see some dogs on here from the – the mid nineties, which is kind of interesting. First time we've seen those pop up yet. Arnold's so. little chip is number six. They're just out of the top five. He's one of those. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like you said, Arnold's little chip there is sixth. Uh, Rocky Ridge, pardon my dust is seventh. Fire river. Michael is eighth. Uh, Branco's mystery man is ninth, which you just talked about a little bit. And then rounding out the top 10 is Clifty Creek's big John. who we talked about a little bit earlier, I believe. Yeah. You know, so there's one where big John is on the, uh, and, and so is, uh, um, Shenango Trigger, you know, but uh, John and, and there's John again on the historical already as well, meets those, uh, meets the criteria, criteria there, you know, and, and then just going down a little further, you know, there's, there's just, there are, hate to not mention some of these dogs really, you know, that was the sure. top 10, you know, but uh, a lot of folks will remember uh, Greenwell's Reggie, you know, he's right there next up, Mighty Little Ozzy or Little Mighty Ozzy, uh, Durban Valley Hitman, all just, uh, uh, just some outstanding sires in their time for sure. So, yeah, so that kind of wraps it up for our, uh, uh, the male side of it. And, um, uh, and, uh, but yeah, just some good, interesting stuff for sure. Hey, Trevor, how about those wait times in the registration queue these days? Uh, that department done an awesome job cutting down on call queue wait times, shortening the length of time between emails and the chat feature is still a short, valuable option. And those, those times have went down to nothing. 
uh, these days, uh, there is hardly any wait time at all. Right. And you're able to get a hold of those departments from 8.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time now, Monday through Friday. Yeah, so we've covered all the males here today. So uh, let's switch over and change gears a little bit and, and talk about some females. Let's start with the all-time most pups produced on the female side. Yeah, I got okay. your top five here for you. The first one here is D. Hans Double Trouble. Second is Glade Top Mountain Go Get Em Daisy. Third is Moore's Cassie. Fourth is River Bottom Love. And tie for fourth there is Lemon Sassy Sue. Yeah, you know, and the female side is going to be a little bit a little bit different. And in the, in the the reason being, when I say a little different, it only picks up uh, it picks up all beagles. Now we have we also have a, a beagles that do perform or compete in in our all breed shows that we don't see on the hunting beagle side. So on this damn list, as far as this all time most pups produced, it picks up all those, and we can't really uh, the query set up a query to separate them or anything, but. Uh, so that it's uh we'll we'll notice a few on the on the list you know that are uh, uh but so you'll get uh, some of those so yeah the number one and most of these top five is int- uh, interesting enough uh, all but one or four out of the five all had ten litters each wow and uh, one had nine litters so this uh, double trouble dog to begin with or the first one total of seventy five puppies she produced she is off a of Dehan's Dookie and the dam is Dehan's Ashker. And is also owned by a Canadian, Gerald DeHaan, in uh, in Fenwick, Ontario, Canada. Top reaper, uh, top uh, female when it comes to uh, puppies uh, reproduced or registered with United Kennel Club. Uh, number two, uh, Glade Top Mountain. Go get him, Daisy. Now this dog is owned by Stan Collins of uh, Missouri, and this is uh, this is one of the dogs you'll see in the Beagle Field Trials. She's number two with seventy four pups. Again, with ten litters. Um, and she's off of halfway Molly's Mr. T, which we mentioned him before. And then Glade Top Mountain Annie. That's, uh, that's going to be Daisy at number two. Number three was the, uh, Moore's Cassie dog with 70 total pups. She is off of, uh, uh, Kegma Lake Squirt. Now there's Squirt again, and he was a, uh, foundation stock dog. So one of them way back in the day. And then the dam was Fry's Kegma Lake Lemon. And this dog is owned by Janine Moore of Deer Park, Wisconsin. Uh, that dog sits third with a total of 70 total pups. Fourth, uh, tied for fourth, we have two of them with a total of 68 pups. And this next dog here, River Bottom Love, is the one that had nine litters. The rest of them in the top five and ten. Uh, but uh, River Bottom Love is uh, sired by River Bottom Traveler and out of River Bottom Slimmer and owned by a lady out of Litchfield, Minnesota. Lisa O'Connor owned that dog. So, and then rounding out the top five was Lemon Sassy Sue, uh, who does not, she was a single registered dog born in 03, but does not have a sire and dam listed there uh, for her, but owned by Joe and Jenny Cackley of Lamar, Missouri. Total of 68 pups there. So that rounds up our, our uh, top five there for that, but uh, yeah, uh, the top five females. And then, uh, what else do we have here for the top 10? Give them a little shout out uh, yeah. here while we have the list here. Yeah, the our rest of the top ten looks like uh, six tied for six here. Ladue's Storm and Glade Top Mountain. Go get them, Jill. Uh, Essex Patches, and then tied for uh, ninth is Dehan Purdy Jenny and uh, Simon's Punch. Yep, there you go. And that's uh, tenth place. There is a total of sixty five pups. So, yeah, and that's all. That's all of them have between nine and ten litters. So. Yeah. Say a couple of these dogs put quite a few litters on the ground, like you said, and still mm-hmm. able to yeah. accrue a, a title, a hunting title. That's right. uh, impressive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, all right. Well, with that said, let's move on to our uh, current uh, reproducers list for uh, beagle dams. And again, that the criteria parameters are exactly same as the males were. It's just the 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 most titled dogs, uh, and that includes puppies that were born January one of two thousand twelve or later. Uh, the current top reproducing female is Chumney's Hurry Up, I'm a Ringer. Second is Stacy's Mountain Outlaw Tipper. Third is Branco's River Bottom Rose. Fourth is Firewater Sassy. And uh, rounding out the top five is 3MC Chloe. Yeah, and there again, just like the males, most of these females, and matter of fact, all of them, they are, um, they are not just uh, brood bitches. <laughs> they made their mark in the field in field trials. 
And uh, Hurry Up, I'm a Ringer is is one of those that has just been an outstanding, outstanding reproducer. Uh, she was a 2008 model sired by Hurry Up Rolling Blue Rock and is off a of Hurry Up Jelly Bean. And this dog was owned by Steve Chumney, same one that uh, ended up with uh, with uh, uh, the uh, uh, male leader there, uh, Shenango Trigger. Uh, but this bitch uh, has a total of 27 pups, of which 11 were hunting beagle champions, uh, four grand hunting beagle champions, and five performance champions for a total of 20 title dogs. Not bad. Yeah, not bad at <laughs> all, I'd say. Uh, number two, mentioned the Stacys. Here they are again with one of their females, a uh, good reproducer. Stacy's Mountain Outlaw Tipper. You know, Tipper is one that they were running probably five, six years ago, seven years ago. It might be longer than I think, and, but... One of those that was very competitive in some of the annual uh, all-star series and those events, you know. But she's uh, sired by uh, Stacy's Mountain Outlaw Bold Stroke Hoss and off of sta or Stout Freckles. She was a 2011 model and uh, obviously owned by Jeff Stacy. Uh, also produced a total of 27 pups, just like uh, Ringer, uh, but 13 of her pups are, are titled. So, and moving on to number three. Number three spot this year is Branco's River Bottom Rose. Now here's a here's a dog that has uh, has done quite well again too. Last year she was fourth moving up, and she's we're probably going to see her uh, moving up even more here in the next year or two. Uh, she was sired by Branco's Baba Clyde, and uh, and uh, the dam her dam was not UKC registered. She was born in 2009, uh, shown here to be owned by Brandon Bates and Travis White. Uh, and produced a total of 22 pups she gets credit for here, uh, of which 11 of those are titled. And then number four, Firewater Sassy. Uh, she was sired by uh, Lefevre's Chain Rock Big, uh, what is that, Big Rowdy, and then JT May powered by Turbo is the dam, 2012 model dog owned by Mark Overcash and Jeff Stacy of North Carolina. Produced a total of 17 uh, pups here that she gets credit for in this in this listing here, of which 10 are uh, are uh, titled. It has one grand, uh, shows one Hall of Fame dog off of this dog here, and that was the very first dog was uh, Flame, uh, it was Kristen Bundy's Flame Dog. Uh, but since then, uh, since this, uh, this list was compiled, there's another one of Flame's uh, Littermates, uh, that also uh, earned that Hall of Fame title, and two out of two out of four total currently that are Hall of Fame have the Hall of Fame designation um, are in the same litter and sight or in, on, on off of this female. That's pretty impressive. That's leaving your mark. Yep, sure. exactly for sure. So there, that was fourth, and that dog has ten total uh, title dogs, and then three uh, MC Chloe rounds up our rounds out our top five. Uh, she is off a of Rhodes Royal Buck, and the dam is not UKC registered. A 2008 model owned by uh, Corey McQueen uh, has a total of 12 pups in this equation here, of which eight are title dogs. And she is also one of them. We talked about uh, or, uh, Hall of Fame dogs. Uh, there's only four. She is uh, uh, Tipper Sire, uh, not Tipper, but uh, which one was that? The Sassy Sire, two of them. And here at number four, Chloe is uh, gets credit for another one of those four. Yeah. So eight eight title dogs there, and that rounds out our top five for current dams. Yeah. After them, uh, talking about the top ten, the next the next five dogs we have on the list are all tied for sixth place with seven titled dogs each, respectively. Mm -hmm. And those are CNR's Maggie May, Hurry Up, Bound for Glory, Coons Hide Holler Rosie, Broke Hollow Hot Flash, and Come Here Pepper Ann. Yeah, and all of those again, just just it's it's just a broken record when I say it again. All of these dogs, you see, they have titles on them, you know. And right. They were uh, they made their marks in the field. Pepper Ann's another good one. I'm uh, there, you hear a lot of good offspring in her. There's a uh, there's a lot of dogs that that are nearly titled off of her, you know. But she was a she was a uh, a lot of guys wanted pups off old Pepper Ann. Yeah, that's one interesting thing is that when you look at these lists of uh, I've, I've kind of switched over to the historical list, getting ready to read it. There's not a single female on this historical list that I'm looking at that doesn't have a hunt title accrued yep. already on this record. That's right. Yeah. So uh, speaking of, let's just move right along to the historical list again. It's just like the males was for that. And uh, that it goes instead of starting at January 1, 
it it goes back all the way uh since uh any any beagle that's in our system uh so our number one historical reproducing female is chumney's hurry up i'm a ringer second is heat em up white river kita third is a world champion shenango star fourth is white river lulu and we got two dogs tied for fifth here uh billy jack's boots and smith's weed eater and yeah, so going back to the number one, uh, Chumney's Hurry Up, I'm a Ringer. She was on the current number one as well, you know. And, uh, uh, again, with that total, uh, she has a total number of 43 pups is what she what she's uh, produced, uh, 36 of which are titled dogs. So, uh, yeah, grand total, again, of 17 hunting beagle champions, eight grands, and 11 performance champions. And you may have heard me talking about a little dog named Boots. That dog was uh, that I used to have. Yes, hunted a little bit. Yep. <laughs> she was that was that's her mama there. Oh, too. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, number two, heat him up, White River Kita. This is another dog that is very uh, is a very recognizable name in the uh, hunting beagle format, and especially uh, well, there again, you, you know, you see, she made her much. She's a grand hunting beagle champion, but as far as uh, in uh, in uh, uh, reproduction records and things like that and pedigrees and things like that heat them up white river key to one of the top reproducing females out there uh had a total she was a 2004 model uh owned by mitch gould and ben hall and if you remember here mitch gould just won the uh world championship a couple uh, months ago here with that little tika dog and tika this, there we go yep tika and i'd say Kita is probably her gra- either her, i think her grandmother tika's grandmother so yeah uh, she, uh, she whelped or has a total of 43 pups, uh, uh, 30 of which are titled 22 hunting beagle champions and eight grand hunting beagle champions, total of, of 30. And there's probably, I would say that that's probably going to change some more. You know, this list was compiled in back in February. So that was number two. Number three has a total of 29 titled dogs and that's the world champion Shenango star. That was uh Shenango triggers mama. So she's third time on the female side, uh, third time or third uh, on the historical. Uh, she was off of Arnold's Little Chip and uh, Billy Jack Boots uh, and owned by the late Bill McFarlane and James Cataldi there. Uh, 29 total dogs. She produced uh, 39, 33 registered dogs uh, total that were registered off of her. Uh, 10 Hunting Beagle champions, 13 Grand Hunting Beagle champions, three Performance champions, and three Grand performance champion so uh, another again very good reproducer number four white river lulu another no another name you see a lot in the uh, pedigrees uh she's sired by uh arnold's little chubby now uh, chubby is another one of those we mentioned foundation stock chubby was one of those uh and same with uh lulu's mama is also one of those copen's ann and uh lulu was has a birth date of 1993 here Owned by the late Dale Prunty there and Chuck Springer, she had uh, uh, gets credit for a total of forty seven pups, of which twenty five are titled out of those forty seven, and then uh, fifth uh, tied for fifth here. I just mentioned her name a little bit ago. Billy Jack Boots is uh, credited for fifth. She was sired by Rising Sun Buckshot Blackie, and is off of uh, another uh, foundation stock dam Bear Branch Pepper. And Boots was uh, born back in 1995 and, again, owned by uh, the late Bill McFarlane and James Cataldi. Uh, has credit for a 31 total pups, of which 22 are were titled. And then, like I mentioned, tied for fifth, also with 22 titled dogs, uh, Smith's Weed Eater Tian. Uh, again, another dog. And all of these, you see a lot of these dogs and a lot of pedigrees, and, and uh, Ann is another one of those. Uh, this dog was a 2000 model owned by Kyle Cheslock, and she has a, a total of 49 puppies produced off of her, of which 22 are titled there. That rounds out our top 10 historical list for, for uh, females. It's the top five. Our top five. Yeah, yep, the top, top five. five. And yep. then uh, just uh, quickly to go through the top 10 here. Um, for In seventh, we have Green Trees Wildfire. In eighth is Hurry Up Lady, another world champion on the list. Ninth is halfway Mark Five's Molly. And then we got a few dogs here tied for 10th. Uh, Milam's Loco Go Ginger. That's still Milam's. <laughs> Milam's Loco Go Ginger. Same people. Sorry about yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Brooke Hollow, Sarah Lee, and Arnold's Little KY, or Kentucky Mountain Lacey. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah, just a, you know, just a impressive list there again. And you can folks can find this on our website by going to our newsletter on the uh, go to uh, to the hunting uh, ops uh, pages and go to Beagles and from there go to news and you'll see it listed. All the newsletters are are, are listed there, and it would be the April twenty two newsletter. You'll find this list. And again, we'll have another one compiled next year about that time in 23, but uh, just interesting stuff there, I, th- I feel like. I love this, uh, always love this uh, historical stuff, going back to some of these old dogs and, and seeing these reproduction records, pretty cool. Yeah, and the best part of it is giving these uh, people, you know, we, we heard a lot of names over and over again. These people deserve to be uh, recognized here for everybody to hear about. It had a huge impact on on beagles and, and just rabbit hunting altogether, right? For sure. You know, and this list actually has shows up to a total of 20 dogs on it, so there's a lot more dogs on it. It was just uh, we could spend hours talking about them, you know, but uh, we highlighted the, hopefully highlighted the uh, top five for sure and kind of and gave a shout out to those top 10. But encourage folks to go check out that list and, uh, and kudos to and congratulations to these breeders that have uh, – my outstanding dogs here for sure. So uh, before we wrap it up here, we have just a, a couple more minutes. I'd like to take a, uh, just a few minutes here and maybe uh, recognize uh, another one of our programs and some, in this case, some kids. We talk about our first strike uh, series uh, programs in our hunting beagle format, but in our uh, gun dog, uh, beagle gun dog program, the BGA, the Beagle Gun Dog Alliance, they have their, um, points junior handler point series as well and that's going to wrap up here at the end of this year as well and i want to give a little shout out to some of those uh kids you know now this is a little different than the first strike series the the way they earn their points is uh they can enter up to three dogs in the same class now they're broke down in four different classes you know so they have the 13 and 15 inch male classes and then the 13 and 15 inch female classes so they can only get credit for no more than three dogs running on the same day in the same class. So the way they earn their points is they get uh, they get one point for uh, handling a dog in the class. And the other thing I think is kind of cool, they get a point if they own that dog. Very and, cool. and I kind of like that idea. Their, their idea of that is it, uh, it gives them a little more ownership and maybe responsibility of owning their own dog, taking care of their own dog. So if they own a dog that they enter, they get a point for that, that they enter the dog in the trial. And then where they can uh, where they can earn the most points is if they place first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. So fifth, they get one other point. They place fourth, they get two points. Third is three points. Uh, fourth or second is four points. And if they uh, win the category, that's five points total. So uh, they could win up to uh, seven points with one with the same dog, you know. So it's a cool program there. And, and while I'm looking at it, we have talked about this program before a little bit. And, um, uh, we talked about Chad Stevens's daughter and we, and I was named, I was calling her Brooke and I'm not sure where that came from. So my apologies to Cadence. I want to correct that here. Cadence Stevens is, uh, we were, I called her Brooke before. So I apologize to you, Cadence, but, uh, uh, I've got, I pulled that up here to make sure I get her name <laughs> correct. So. So yeah, just to give a shout out here, you've got that list over here. Uh, so we just like the first strike series, they do separate them uh, in two separate categories: uh, the senior division, and those are kids aged uh, 13 through 17, and then the junior division are uh, kids uh, 12 years and, and younger. So uh, you you have the list over. I there? I do have it. Here. Yeah, let's give a shout out to the top couple, top three, four, five of them. Here. Okay, let's talk about the top five here in yeah, the senior yeah. division. Uh, first with 38 points is Elijah Oxendine. Second with 19 is Channing McMillan. Third uh, with 17 points is Donta Ramsey, who I saw just won a, yeah. a national championship a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, fourth with 15 points is Elijah Gentry, Gentry. And rounding out the top five there with three points is Ronnie Glenn Hammonds. Yeah, you know, and then you, there's two more on that list. Let's go ahead and mention Logan uh, Corn, uh, Cornticel, I guess. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And then also Lawson Stevens. But that makes up the the seniors that have earned points. And this was the first year for it. And uh, I, I expect, you know, having a program like this, we expect to see quite a few more kids. But uh, Elijah Oxendine, he is a uh, he has got 18 total handler points, a uh, total of 20 place points for a grand total of 38 points. He's leading that uh, the the senior division. Uh, he is from uh, North Carolina, just a polite kid, loves dogs, a great kid. And uh, yeah, so he's leading that. 
Channing McMillan. I do believe he's from Mississippi, I think. Don't hold me to it, but he's from the south there somewhere. He's sitting second with 19 points. And then close behind him is that Dante Ramsey that you mentioned with 17 and then Elijah Gentry with 15. So that's pretty tight there for it is. Uh, for uh, uh, second, third, and fourth for sure. But, yeah, Dante, he earned quite a few points at the national championship there a couple of weeks ago, winning well, that one class. The way it's formatted, you can make a run in a, yeah. in a weekend pretty easily. Yeah, and this is, a, this is just a great uh, format for young kids to get involved with and be able to handle dogs for sure. So, yeah, let's move on to uh, the junior division there. Yeah, first place in the junior division currently is Caden Christensen. With 33 points, second is Joseph Daniel Keener with 12 points. Got to see Joseph quite a bit at the at the Brace Nationals. Great young kid, yeah. all, helped us out a lot. Jonathan's son, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jacob Lee Jewell is third there with 11 points. Kip Lawrence is fourth with eight, and we got a couple tied with with seven points. Uh, Cadence Stevens, who you just mentioned earlier, and Landon Creech. Yep, yep, and and uh, Caden Christensen, he's leading the junior division there with a total of 33, 11 handler points currently. No owner points this year for him, but he has 22 uh, placement points. And uh, and uh, he, I met him down in in Mississippi at I think it was at the Almost Heaven Club uh, there in Mathiston, Mississippi. But just some, he and his buddies there, several of them are on this list. Uh, good kids, and they are serious. They were at the Nationals, too. I think you might have met them there. They were at the Nationals in Pontotoc. Yeah, sure and, did. And uh, yep. driving around on the uh, ATVs and everything, and there's, those boys are serious. But uh, this is one of them, Cadence, and doing a fantastic job, total of 33 points. You mentioned Joseph Keener there, and Jacob Lee Jules, another one there from the Carolinas, he both was. of those boys. Yep. And uh, Joseph actually, uh, he picked up several points there at the Nationals this year. And then uh, Kip Lawrence is another one. He's uh, from uh, he's one of uh, Caden's buddies down in Mississippi. And then we mentioned Cadence Stevens there in, in the Carolinas as well. And then uh, let's just give a shout out to the rest of them in the junior division that have earned points so far. Landon Creech, you mentioned, and then Bo Ryan McCarty, Rhett Lastinger. Rhett Lastinger is one I met in South Carolina last year. You and I went to the uh, Grand American right. first weekend in July or uh, January. And then I went to a, a, one of these beagle trials uh, while we were there. And that's where I met uh, uh, Rhett Lastinger. You may see I did a little interview with the, one of the kids there. Yeah, I said uh, that, was, that yeah. was Rhett right there, yeah. uh, Rhett Lastinger. Uh, Brennan Tolano, uh, Bryson Milam, Jace Price, Kelsey Cribb, and Remington Price round, up, uh, round out the other juniors that have earned points in this, uh, in this BGA Junior Handler Point Series. So, but... Uh, yeah, so an interesting topics today, and uh, boy, Trevor, I sure appreciate you sitting down with me and talking about some of these beagles again. Yeah, I just want to apologize to everybody whose name I butchered, but hopefully uh, you still enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, with that said, we're going to wrap it up, and uh, until next time. Thanks for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and to like and follow UKC Hunting Ops on Facebook and Instagram.